So let's talk about the Commodore 64 running on an M1 Mac. Another visitor. Stay a while. Stay forever. If you recognize that clip, then you're definitely from the 80s. So this is the uh, Commodore 64, an 8-bit computer from the 80s. My first love. This is uh, the device on which I learned to code. And of course, it has a lot of fantastic games. Uh, there's still a whole scene about it out there. People are still making games for it. And for my part, on every laptop that I have, I like to have a Commodore 64 emulator running. And I wanted to see how that emulator runs on the M1 Mac. And uh, as you've just seen, it runs just fine. So I'm running it on the Weiss emulator, which is the best Commodore 64 emulator out there. They have builds for pretty much every uh, platform, as you can see. If you, you you can download it from from the website, you can see the uh, the URL right here, or you can just Google it. And if you go down, then you see that they do have a Mac build, and this is the build I'm using: Weiss 3.5 GT GTK3, which is the recommended version. Now I already have it installed, and so if I bring it up right now. Um, you see it gives me an option. I can have the 128, the Big 20 and so on, but I'm just going to go with the, the 64 emulator here. And if I run it, boom, there it is. The good old Commodore 64 with 38911 basic bytes free. So if you have ever used a Commodore 64, the one thing that you would always remember is the poke to change the screen color. So let's just quickly try that. So you go P-O-K-E poke 53280,0. That turns the border into black and if you do poke 53281,0 that of course will turn the screen black. But of course the Commodore 64 was about the games so uh, I've already shown you one impossible mission. Let's try a few more. Right then, so this was really a trip down memory lane for me. Like I said, the Commodore 64 was my first love and I still love that machine. If you do end up using the Weiss uh, emulator on your uh, Mac or for that matter any machine, do explore the settings because it lets you do, you know, a lot of very detailed settings. Um, one of the things that you will want to do almost immediately is the input devices. So you can set the joysticks which you require and, you know, they can be set to different um, key sets. Right now I've set it for up, down, the arrow keys, but you can configure it for different keys. The other thing that you might want to sort of uh, do is the audio. Uh, don't mess around too much, but I mean, if you go to the SID chip, then you can you can choose the different models. And I've noticed that 8580 doesn't work for some games, <clears throat> but 6581 does. And so you'll sort of want to fiddle around with these a little bit to make sure it works uh, well for you. And if you're really retro nerdy, then, you know, knock yourself out. There's a ton of, of, of settings here that you can do. You have peripheral devices. You know, you can do your, uh, well, you get the idea. You, you can just go on and on. Okay, so uh, that was uh, that was a fun one for me personally. I hope you enjoyed it as well, at least those of you who do have memories of the Commodore 64. And uh, maybe I'll see you in the next one.